Hi gang, Mr. Cruz here with uh, an AP Stats lecture for you. Uh, today we're going to talk about power models. If you're watching this, I'm probably either not at school or uh, I'm in a great deal of pain and don't want to talk much, so I'm doing this in the past. Thanks past me. Uh, but anyway, we're going to talk about power models today. Yesterday we talked about exponential, and I kind of want to recap that real quick. Uh, so if you graph your data and your scatter plot appears to follow like an exponential model, so you know what I'm talking about, like exponential growth, exponential decay, you should try taking the log of the y values. And again, I mentioned it doesn't matter if you take the natural log or the common log. You can do either one. But the idea is you leave x alone, okay, and you log y. So the relationship is between x log y. Uh, and I told you yesterday, okay, take the log of the y values. Uh, so L1 is your x values. L3 is the log of the y values. And you get a relationship that looks like this. Log y hat equals a plus bx. I showed you a little bit of algebra rearrangement. You can actually rewrite that as y hat equals 10 to the a times 10 to the bx. Okay, and notice it's exponential because x is in the exponent. So if I log y, it's exponential. Okay, but unfortunately that doesn't fix everything. What if taking log y doesn't work? Okay, what if there, it still leaves you with a curve? Then we do what's called a power model. Maybe it's more appropriate. Okay, maybe if I take x to some power, notice there's a constant out front that adjusts for the curve, but x to some power, okay, and this is why it's a power model, okay, because you're taking x to the power, um, maybe that will work better, okay? Now, I need to figure out what exactly that power is, right? How do I know what power that is? So I'm going to solve for p, and to do that, we're going to take the log of both sides, okay? Just like we did yesterday, log of both sides, okay? You'll notice, obviously, log y is still a part of this whole thing. But if I take log of a times x to the p, that very quickly, due to uh, the product rule of logarithms, that quickly becomes log a plus log of x to the p. And again, I can bring that exponent out front of the logarithm, right? Power of a logarithm. And it becomes p log x. So you'll notice this right here, log y equals log a plus p log x, that is actually linear. p is a constant times your log x, okay? So that's basically your slope, and then log a is just a constant. So this is actually a linear relationship by taking the log of both x and y. Uh, and you'll notice the power p, that power, the exponent of the x, that's actually your slope, which is actually kind of nice. All right, so basically, suffice it to say, I know it's a lot of algebra, a power model is simply logging x and logging y. Okay, yesterday we just did log y. Today we're doing both. Okay, let me show you an example here. Uh, so, before facts were changed, uh, back when I was a kid, there used to be nine planets in our solar system. Okay, uh, we now have eight planets and a couple of like dwarf planets. Uh, here are data on the distance from the sun and period of revolution for each of the original nine planets. So, this is astronomical units of how far each planet is from the sun. So Earth is one astronomical unit. We kind of use ourselves uh, as one unit. It's kind of self-centered, but whatever, it works. And then a period of revolution. Okay, how long does it take it to revolve around the sun? Mercury, uh, it takes almost a quarter of a year. Pluto takes almost 249 years, okay? Uh, but anyway, this is our data. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to type it into list one. Oops. I'm going to type it into list one and list two. All right, so I have my data in, okay? I just kind of skipped that for you so you can probably get it in yourself. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a scatter plot. So between L1 and L2, it looks like I've got it. I'm going to zoom nine. And if I look at that, it's not a very clear picture, but it's it doesn't look linear, right? There is that curve. And I think if I actually look uh, at a different graph, uh, this was through StatCrunch. You can kind of see it more. Okay, there's definitely a curve. I would say linear model, probably not good. Okay, so here's what we might try. We might try logging, okay, our variables. And I'll tell you what, yesterday I just had you do log y, but I think what might be a better idea is let's go ahead and log both, okay, just in case we need it. So in L3, I'm actually going to log x. So I'm going to log list 1, okay. Again, making sure I have no zero values in list one. And then in list four, I'm going to log list two. So list three is log x. List four is log y. Okay. What we did yesterday is we did between x and log y. So let's look at that. x, so that's list one, and log y is now L4. 
Okay. I'm going to zoom 9 it. Ooh, still curved. In fact, probably more curved than it was before. Okay. I would definitely say decidedly not linear. In fact, here's another picture of it. Definitely curved. Okay. So maybe just logging y, maybe that exponential model is not good enough. So let's try between L3 and L4. What if I log both variables? Okay, and this is good since I already did it. Since I already have this 3 and L4 already good, I'm going to zoom 9 that. Oh my goodness. So far, that looks pretty straight. Okay, that looks fantastic. And here's another picture of it. Uh, yeah, I would say that's actually pretty solid. Almost perfectly straight. So I'm going to go ahead and get the line. So stat, option 8. And that was between log x and log y. So list 3 and list 4. Make sure you tell your calculator that. And it looks like uh, I get some scientific notation here for my a. So please be careful. Make sure you watch out for that e stuff. Okay. Uh, so I'm actually going to write this down. Okay. So I wrote it down. Uh, the 1.105, um, I just moved it four places to the left. Uh, so one, two, three, four, and that's where I got that. 1.499x. Now, there is one little problem here. This is actually wrong. This is not the equation of the line, okay? Because it's not x and y hat anymore. I logged both of those. So it's actually log x, and you might want to put parentheses around there just so you don't get confused with your l and your 1, uh, and it's actually log of y hat, okay? This is actually your equation, okay? 0 0.000105 plus 1.499 log x. Okay, now you can do some algebraic rearranging if you want, okay, but you don't have to. This is perfectly fine. If you want more info about that, I can show you on uh, when I get back. Now, I do want you to look at something. R squared and R are both almost perfect. Uh, they're like 0.999 all the way out to like five or six or seven places. Uh, so R and R squared are great. I'll bet if I did it between list one and list four, it would probably not be near as strong because remember, it was still curved. Okay, so there's our equation. Now, <clears throat> we can write that back in power form, and I'll show you that perhaps later. Uh, we can actually use this model now to make predictions. The other dwarf planet, okay, other than Pluto, is called Eris, and its average distance from the sun is, is 102.15 AU. Now, I'm not quite sure where that fits, 102. Point uh, okay, it's way out past Pluto. All right, I was just curious. Um, anyway, we're going to predict, using our model, the period of revolution for Eris. Now, this is a little bit of extrapolation, right? But this is actually how, you know, astronomers do this stuff. This is how they figure out how far these things are. So we're actually going to use our model now, 102.15 for x. So I'm going to plug in x and get a, um, a prediction. So log y hat equals 0 0.00105 plus 1.4999 log of 102.15. Okay, so this is where I have to go to my calculator and I have to do, uh, not natural log, log of 102.15, okay, times 1.4999, and then plus that 0 .00 how many zeros? Three zeros, 105. And that gives me a prediction of 3.01, I'm just going to go out a couple places, 3.014. Okay, but here's the catch, that's log of y hat. So log of the number of years it would take to go around the sun is 3.014. But that's not the actual number of years, right? It's way farther out there than Pluto, it's going to take a lot longer than three years. So to get y by itself, I have to bump the base, okay? Base of log is 10, okay? So whatever I do to one side, though, I have to do to the other. The 10 and the log canceled, I'm just left with y hat. And then now I just have to do whatever 10 to the 3.014 power is, okay? So 10 to the 3.014 power, uh, which is 1032.76. Um, years. That's how many years it takes it to do one revolution around the sun according to this model. Okay. Hopefully that helped. 
Uh, the big thing that I want you guys to know for sure, okay, is that if we do x, y, that's just our regular linear regression, okay? No big deal there. If I do x log y, that is what we call an exponential model, okay? Exponential model. And if I do log x log y, that is what is called a power model, okay? It takes lots of power to log both of them, okay? Make sure you know those. Now, you might be wondering, Cruz, when do I use which one? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, <laughs> here's the stats answer. It depends, okay? Basically, try making different scatter plots and see what happens. Obviously, if you're concerned about using the logarithm, it's probably because x, y wasn't linear. So I would try x log y as a starting point. If that still looks curved, go for the power model, log x log y, okay? Uh, honestly, whichever's the most linear, go with that option. Whichever one looks the straightest, whichever one has the highest r and the highest r squared, go for it, okay? Now, if they're both pretty linear, I would look at the r and the r squared values or maybe even look at a residual plot to see which one has a stronger relationship. I can actually show you the residual plot for this one if you'd like. Since I had my calculator do the least squares regression, uh, it would be between list three and residuals. So I go second stat and option seven and then zoom nine. Uh, now, here's what is a little scary. For how straight my line was, that actually looks very curved. But uh, I think one of our concerns here is uh, unwarranted because look how small these residuals are. That's 0.0003, basically. Okay, that's my biggest residual. I mean, these are very tiny residuals. So while we see a pattern, since they're so tiny, it's not, it's not a big deal that there's a pattern there. So anyway... I hope this has helped. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll try and respond the best I can. Um, your job is now to work on this homework for Chapter 9. All right? I will see you tomorrow.